Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get some really interesting insights from your personal knowledge management system, Second Brain, using a combination of text mining, text network analysis and AI. So that in the end, you have something like this, what you see on the graph. So instead of a normal visualization here, where you just see the connections between the pages, you have a visualization of both the pages and the concepts that you use in your graph. And also you can see the main topics and the clusters they form, how they're interconnected, and most importantly, the gaps in your ideas. And then you can use the AI to generate interesting research questions or facts that would generate those gaps, bridge them in a new way, and help you generate new ideas on top of your existing discourse. So stay with this tutorial to see how it works. Normally, when we're using software like uh, Obsidian, um, or Rome Research or LogSec, we have a visualization that allows us to see how our pages are connected. And we can use this information to get an overview and understand which things could be linked. But the problem is that we don't have any network science insights on top of this graph. And in fact, it becomes much less usable due to that reason. Here, we use the software that's called Infranodus that visualizes uh, your Obsidian ROM Research LogSec uh, Vault as a network graph. It imports both the pages and the concepts, which you can see here on the graph. We can also switch the views and view only the connections between the pages or only the connections between the concepts, so we can see both. Okay, And then we can use advanced network analysis algorithms to identify here in the analytics panel what are the main topical clusters, so which words and concepts and page tend to belong together more often. Here we have four of them identified and there is even more here. Then also the most influential elements in this network, so what are the concepts and the pages uh, that carry the most influence in this discourse. Then we can also get some insights about the narrative structure, we can have uh, insights about sentiment, some statistics uh, from text mining, we can also see the relations and the bigrams that are used in the text. We can use the structural insights, and this is a really interesting thing, to detect the gap in this discourse, so which two topics are connected but could be connected better. So here it identifies two of them. It also finds uh, some statements that we could link. And we can use this insight with the AI helper here to generate interesting research questions or facts that would link those two groups of concepts together. So it means that they exist in our discourse, but they're not very well linked. And the idea here is that if we bridge those gaps, we will be able to generate something that is relevant to our discourse because it touches upon the topics that we're interested in, but it connects them in a new way. So this is why the ideas will be uh, more interesting here. So I will click here and demonstrate how it works. It's going to identify another gap and then generate uh, some facts. Some of them can be quite interesting and useful. So for example here they're talking about Hausdorff dimension of space. So I will save this into the graph and here is what I can do using the tool also is that uh, once I have my existing discourse exported I can also just copy the ideas which I generated by the AI, go into the interpret uh, mode, add the idea inside, save it separately so that later I will filter all the ideas that I added into this discourse by this tag here, uh, interpret, and then import them back into my uh, logsec or obsidian vault. So basically I export all the data into Infranodus, visualize it as a graph, and then get the data back uh, and uh, add all the ideas I added back into the system that I was using for managing my knowledge. So here I just showed you some of the main features and if you want to learn more about how it works stay with this tutorial so I show everything step by step. So first of all when we want to import some data what we can do is to go into the Infranodus home apps page and you have a lot of different imports here. You can import uh, anything you want, Google search results, your own text, you can even write uh, using the live ideation system. Here I'm going to import some stuff I have from Rome Research and I'm going to select some files here. So I'm basically selecting all of them at once. 53 files, it's a research 
I'm doing at the moment on fractal dimensions and networks. Click visualize and what we have here is a visualization of all the connections between the pages and the concepts and it's going to give some warnings about uh, some pages that are empty because they're just backlink references but it's important to know which ones have contact, which ones have no content. And then, first of all, what I like to do is just look at the graph and to see what are the main things that pop up. So this stage is really good for remembering what I was writing about. I was actually working on that a year ago, so now I'm going to use this network to get back into this discourse. I see that it's about networks, scale-free networks, fractal networks, fractal dimension, small world, fractal weight network. So I understand a little bit better what this discourse was about. I can also use the analytics panel here on the right to see what are the main influential elements. It's the things I see on the graph and what are the main topical groups. And to explain to you how it works, it's basically uh, a very uh, widely used network science algorithms. Here we use the measure of between the centrality to identify the most relevant and influential terms inside the network. And here we use community detection algorithms that measure how often the terms and the pages appear in the same context. And then based on that, it gives them different colors and also positions them next to each other on the graph. So you can easily see uh, what are the clusters of nodes that belong together and what are the most influential elements in each of them. Of course, this is very different to what you have in the standard graph visualizations used by uh, personal knowledge management systems because they just show you which nodes have most connections but they don't have this information on the community and on the, and on the influence of individual elements. So this is the advantage that you actually have a graph here but with all these different additional metrics uh, that is used in network science to better understand what all those elements are about. After I have this quick overview of the main topics and what this discourse was about I can also go into the gap inside see which two clusters uh, could be linked. So I can click on reveal the gap and view that here. And Infranodus is going to reiterate through several gaps as you go through the system. So it's not only one gap, it's a few, and it's going to recommend them to you one by one. So once I have this general overview and I understand what this discourse is about, I can also select some of the terms. So for example, here I select network, and I'm going to get rid of it because I know that uh, I'm talking about networks in this research. So I'm going to hide this node and see what else pops up in the discourse. And now if I think that I have too much information, I have a graph view switch here where I can see the connections between the pages only. So there I see how all my pages are related and also which communities they form. Okay, So I can see that small world belongs to diffusion and fractal weight networks and topology. So this can be interesting for the study on epidemic threshold here. So I already see some interesting groups of pages that I have and I'm starting to get some ideas about how I could connect them because there is a big gap between fractal dimension and scale free. So for example, this is something I would work on. And then I can also switch into the concepts view and see what concepts I'm talking about. And here I see that fractal also comes up so I'm going to hide it as well just using this button here. Model is a pretty obvious word. I'm going to get rid of it too. So now I see what's hiding behind those concepts. And this is the advantage of this graph because unlike other graphs, um, and now I'm going to show Obsidian graph just as an example. It's not really easy to see what happened if you deleted this node. And here it's a different story because we can remove nodes uh, and gradually see what's hiding behind them. So for example here, I see that the, the concept of distribution and scale comes up and this is interesting for me. So I select those nodes and then I open the statements to see in which context those terms were used. So here I have a text panel that shows me in which context those terms uh, are being used in my discourse. So I see that it's something about scale-free distribution and how it can be used to actually identify the type of the network. So this is an idea that I want to add into this discourse. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to the interpret overlay and write that, uh, let's say, power law distribution. As you can see, it automatically can create... I don't actually have it as a page, so I will add it, power law distribution. 
can be used to identify scale-free networks. I'm going to save this with the interpret tag into the discourse. It's going to be added here. Um, and gradually, as I add more and more content, I will be able to visualize just the ideas I added. So I'm going to look at something else and I see here something about brain activity. I select that. I see in which context it was used. Uh, so I will write something about fractal dimension of human brain. Just as a reminder, actually, of an interesting connection to explore when I get back to this research. So I'm going to save this as well. And now I understand a little bit better what this discourse is about, what are the different topics that I could add into it. Um, I also see how they're connected and whether there are some gaps in between. And now I can start using the AI to generate uh, some new ideas in relation to this discourse. So for instance, uh, just to make it easier, I'm actually going to go back and return these notes that I deleted into the graph. So I, see, I have the whole picture and then I go into the gap inside panel here and I'm going to ask in front to identify the structural gaps, which two topics on the periphery or which bridge could be developed better. So here I see these two topics that are connected but not so well connected. So I'm going to ask it to generate a research questions using the GPT-3 AI that would link those two groups of concepts together. So here it says, what is the relationship between characteristic brain activity and consciousness in healthy and unhe unhealthy patients? So this is great because it's a question on the uh, structure of the neural network in both healthy and unhealthy patients. So maybe I could connect my discourse to the discourse on health. So in order to do this, I'm going to save this idea into the graph. You see it's added here. Generate more ideas. Relationship between brain activity and consciousness. Okay, this is not so interesting. I'm going to generate some more questions. If, if you see something you don't like, you can just skip it. Uh, okay, so he's still focused on this idea of conscious disorders. Okay, so I'm going to save this also into the graph. And then I'm going to change the AI module and ask it to generate some facts. Usually people who are afraid of AI, they don't like this feature because they say that the AI is doing the job for you. But uh, we have the questions feature also. So if you want to generate ideas on your own, you can also use the question one. But here it's talking about uh, different algorithms that it can be used to find the shortest path between two nodes in the network. Okay, so this can be also interesting for me because maybe some algorithms can uh, be connected to this idea of healthy and unhealthy. So maybe I could edit this statement. I will actually add it into the interpret overlay because this is where I'm writing down the ideas that I want to end up in the final research. And I can just say something like uh, uh, check how this algorithm can oops can be used can be used to identify the let's say network structure type and also its relation to health mental health uh, and also I will write here brain networks so that all those concepts are linked. I'm going to add this. This is going to be some ideas. As you can see, it actually floats out from the rest because it's something new. And this is great because it allows me to, you know, uh, connect things in a new way and to come up with different ideas. Then I'm going to continue generating some facts here and see if there is anything else. So this is something about the distances or collapsing nodes based on their distance. So this is just an idea on science. I'm going to save it separately with a separate tag. And basically, I would go on in this way in an iterative manner. So once uh, I reach a certain point where I'm satisfied with this research, in fact, I'm going to uh, make a detour here because I'm not yet satisfied. I will delete those nodes again, Network Fractal, because this is what I'm talking about. I know this already. And I'm just going to reset the filter so it only shows the concepts. Here we go. 
and I'm going to select some nodes and ask the AI to generate some ideas based on those nodes. So for example, spreading, infection, model, cluster, connectivity. Then I go into the inside panel, you see all those nodes are selected and now I can ask the AI to generate some interesting facts based on those nodes. So I'm going to click that and it's going to come up with some interesting ideas. As you see, it's, it's talking about clustering model as a tool that can be used to predict how infection will spread through a population. Great, okay, this is nice because I'm getting to the specific methodologies I can use to analyze information. And by the way, it also connected to some cluster which was disconnected here, so that was a good choice. You can also choose the nodes that are not yet connected and use that feature to connect them because when you connect the gaps, it's always really interesting to do. So for example, distribution, clustering, degree and something here uh, let's say box algorithm brain so let's really try to connect things that are not linked at all you see we selected those nodes go to the AI those nodes are selected click on facts and see what kind of information we can generate based on that okay so this is quite a lot of stuff on the different algorithms that can be used to measure uh, the structure of the network. So I add this into the graph and once I go through a few iterations like this, I'm going to return everything back into the graph. Here I have a filter where I can see all the ideas that I added separately. So they're all under the interpret. Actually I have to press pages and concepts because I was mainly adding pages. So not so many but some of course you would have uh, much more of those and facts and these are the facts that I added and here I can say just want to see the concepts used in those facts okay interesting so I have all this information and now I can export this so for example if I just wanted to get only the AI stuff into the graph I click on export the data choose MD here I export an MD file and then I import it into Obsidian ROM Research log set or RAM node. Um, I can also choose my own stuff. So the, the things which I wrote down, there were not so many, but they were all relevant because they were making new connections. And again, export them separately, add them as another page so that I have all this information neatly separated from one, one another. And then I can use all these insights to continue generating my discourse in my favorite software, be it Obsidian or Logsec. I still cannot decide which one I like more. So this is how it works, this approach. You, you can try it out uh, on your own data, on your own uh, second brains using infranodus.com. I advise you first to export just uh, some chunk of your data, so maybe you have a folder um, like I think I do here in uh, Obsidian. No, I don't have folders here, but if you have a folder, it's better to, to, to import a folder so you can first work on a small sample of your data to understand how it works, and then you can get all the files in and see what the difference is. We're working on building in a live plugin, but at the moment it would be really nice to get feedback from users uh, to see what kind of features you like, uh, whether it's useful for you or not. So please let us know in the comments to this video uh, what you think about it, if it works for you, if you have any requests or questions, uh, any feature ideas, let us know. Thank you very much.